This podcast is part of the Everyday Heroes Podcast Network, the network for first responders and those who support them. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the Hero Academy Podcast. I created this podcast for you if you are a first responder, police officer, fireman, nurse, military personnel. This podcast is for you. Let's get your stories out. They need to be heard by everyone, especially the good ones. Let's share those stories and create some positivity out there in the world. Enjoy this episode. My guest today is Todd Spence, paramedic, EMT, fireman, part of the sheriff's department, <laughs> tactical unit. If you could, could you just tell the audience like what you were doing before you started? Have you been an EMT pretty much your entire life, fireman your whole life? I actually started out well, after I graduated from high school. I started out with uh, didn't really know what I wanted to do. I'll be honest with you. So I I jumped on board with my uh, volunteer rescue squad in the county just to kind of see where I wanted to go. And they're the first ones to send me to EMT school. And whenever I got to EMT school, uh, man, I, I caught the bug. I really did. And then it kind of jumped from there. So while I was doing EMT stuff, I was doing executive bodyguard work. But then, uh-huh. you know, the hours were awful, of course. Uh-huh. And, uh, That's all overnight work. Yep. Yeah, all overnight work. Or you end up getting paired up with some politician that is just horrendous. And uh, I got into EMT. As soon as I got my EMT license, got on the truck. Uh, a couple years later, got my paramedic license. And that's where I stayed. Uh, I did do a small stint in ICU at my local hospital just to see if I wanted to progress to be an RN. And for me, I like the adrenaline. I like the uh, not knowing what the next call is going to bring. So I like that aspect of it. So that's why I stick with being a paramedic in emergency medicine, that side of things, and being on an ALS truck. And um, that's where I spent my past 15 years. And then in that time frame, you know, being the tactical medic on our SORT team, the special operations response team for Superior County Sheriff's Department, and I've been a deputy there for 10 years now. I just celebrated my 10-year 10, 10 anniversary, so. Congratulations. Thanks, sir. Uh, how many more years are you thinking until you hang up the whole thing? Or you think you're going to ride the ambulance forever until you drop? Uh, man, I don't know. That's That's a fantastic question because... The state of Tennessee has always been 30 and 55, whichever one come first. So now they're saying 25. And we're because now we just made we are the 12th state to make EMS workers essential workers. So yes. uh, with that being said, that knocks five years off. I'm already vested in the retirement. And in theory, in five years, I could be done. I could absolutely cash in my retirement and everything like that but i don't think that's going to happen i think that I'll, I'll keep on well one you love it and two you have young sons correct yeah and uh college is not cheap so yeah absolutely ne- neither is high school sports or anything like that so yeah i'll keep on until you know i just cannot physically do it anymore or I've met all my goals and they are well taken care of and they're good to go. That's the main thing. I saw on your uh, Instagram that you have been coming down and wait. How much have you uh, lost altogether? 150 right now. Oh, so, congratulations. Thank you. So it was about uh, November of 2018. We were out on a mission and we were uh, serving a high risk warrant for a sovereign citizen. And we were way, way, way back in the sticks. We're talking, you know, a two mile hike in from where our cars were. Wow. And I ended up getting bit by something right in my chest, right underneath my left wrist. And I, and I figured, okay, it's probably a tick. It might've been a spider. I wasn't really sure. Three days later, I could not raise my left arm. I had severe cellulitis and inflammation. And I ended up having to be admitted and all kinds of, nar- of uh, antibiotics and everything like that. So they think, after it finally ruptured, that they think it was a spider bite. And wow, fortunately, by the time they were able to culture it, I had had heavy-duty antibiotics. So they couldn't really get a specific culture on it. So 
whenever that happened, uh, I had a really rough doctor that was, that's all he preached to me. That's all he just kept on and on and on and on and on. And uh, it's your weight, it's your weight, it's your weight. You have a blocked sweat gland. And he just kept on harping with that. Now, mind you, I couldn't even pronounce this doctor's last name. And, and I was like, no, nah, I don't think that's it, doc. So I went to my home doctor and I went and talked to him. And uh, after it was all said and done over with, and we got our cultures back and it was an infection. It was literally some form of infection. So I said, you know what? That's it. I'm going to prove him wrong. So I started doing high protein, low carb, and now I'm down. I was 460, and then I weighed this two days ago at 317. So Congratulations. Thanks, sir. I know it's a long process. How much further do you want to go down? I have a goal. I have a goal that I want to meet as far as pant size, and once I meet that pant size, I think I'm, I think I'm good. So All right. And you're a pretty big guy. You got to be over six two, six three, right? I'm six four, yeah. Six four, yeah. I can tell. So. I can tell. What's the biggest challenge that you're facing right now, either professionally or, or personally? Professionally, just the, the call volume, I guess, and, and the stress with everything that's going on. Of course, now with COVID on the spike, you know, we went from we're a tourist attraction. You know, we were at the base of the Appalachian Mountains, Appalachian Trail. And uh, we have Dollywood theme park and then all that. So we're a big tourist attraction. So it literally, whenever COVID hit, all of our revenue died. It was gone. You know, tourists was gone and everything like that. So we started, we had a breather for a good year. And then now it's, it's absolutely wide open, you know, call volume, just out craziness. So we, we done some tallying up today. Since May the 4th of this year to August the 1st, we had 10,558 911 hang-up calls. That's just hang-up calls. Wow. We've had our numbers have increased 147% on our call volume from last year already. And we are still in full season. Our season will not die down until about the middle of January. You mentioned Pigeon Forge. Someone told me about that place. Someone said that it was magical. <laughs> Something like that. It's pretty close to it. It's um, basically five or six miles of just straight roads and anything you could think of for a tourist attraction. It is a very family-friendly atmosphere. Crime rate is not high at all, to be honest with you. Per capita, it's nothing like Chicago or anything like that. There's nothing even remotely close to that. I don't know why. I feel bad for these Chicago police officers. I don't know why, like, they wouldn't look to work somewhere else if, if they could, you know? Right. I understand when you have root, your roots down somewhere, you know, you have your family settled in, but some working conditions just aren't worth it. No, no. And, and that's what I was always thinking because we had a gentleman that was, uh, he come from Detroit, Michigan. He come down to us and, you know, with his credentials and everything like that. And I'm going to say all those officers in Chicago right now, yeah, they can get a job anywhere else they want to. Absolutely. It'd be rough. That's for sure. I don't, I don't know how they do it. Yeah, I don't know how they do it either. What's the biggest lesson that you've learned in your time? Well, two things that nothing is as it seems, of course. You know, nothing is black and white. It's all a lot of gray. You yep. know, you may have something that you think is absolutely 110% this way. And then after you start digging around, it's another way. And also hope isn't a plan. You want to be prepared for anything and everything. If you look over in the corner, you know, I've got my little Batman logo because that's affectionately what they call me because I carried so much gear and I still did <laughs> my wife will attest. I've got a bag for everything, every car, every vehicle, everything like that. And, you know, you never really know what you're going to run into and you got to be prepared for anything and everything. So that's really the, the two things I learned from it because, and also situational awareness, because you never know what's going to happen. You never know what you're going to run into. The biggest lesson that I learned of that specific instance was the, the wildland fires of 2016, 2016, I was boots on the ground whenever, you know, Gatlinburg caught on fire. And unfortunately, 
yes, we lost 14 souls, you know, and, and that was the worst part of the thing. But if it when it happened on a weekend, we would have lost thousands and thousands of folks. But yes, I was absolutely in places I've never, ever, ever should have been. I was kicking in doors because of where the power went out. And then we lost all cell phones. And with that happening, all your alarm companies, your ADTs and everything like that, your security links and everything like that, they started calling in. And whenever they started calling in, you know, we couldn't make contact with these folks because all of our cell phone lines and everything were down. So we physically had to go check on them because I couldn't just sit there and say, well, you know, I hope the best for them. We tried every which way in the world to get up to as many places as we could. And every single incident that I run into, except for a couple, was I would go up, the power would be off at the house. You could hear the alarm beep in the background. And we'd end up kicking in the door and there would be no one home. Mm. They would be either at the nursing home or already self-extricated and got out a long time ago. Now, that was the case on some parts. Uh, some, we made it just in time. I mean, there's this one in particular, this one lady was on a vent and her porch was on fire whenever we pulled in. So my partner, as I am going in there with the daughter and loading the patient up, my partner is taking a garden hose just to spray down the porch so we can leave to get out. Wow. So, yeah, those are really the biggest lessons. And, you know, as far as it comes with ethics is I tried to treat everyone like I would want to be treated. I treated everyone like it was my dear grandmother that was sick. So I tried to take care of everyone. Now, on the police side of things, I believed in a two-strike rule. If I, <laughs> I went up to you and you started cussing me, I warned you the first time. And then the second time, if you keep on cussing me, then we're not friends anymore. So I saw that you had the, the sheriff shirt on. So I was going to ask about that. What sort stand for again? Special operations response team. We're the, the SWAT team. We do a lot of high end warrants, especially for, you know, drugs, of course. And then, you know, aggravated assaults. Uh, we've went out for some homicide folks. I don't know why, but some people, after they've killed someone up north, they want to come here. Yeah, it so, happens a lot because they think they can hide in Tennessee. Yeah, they think they can get away. So we'll go get them, you know, and we worked hand in hand, of course, with the marshal service and stuff like that. So, yeah, we work hand in hand with everybody. That's pretty cool. If you could have your own Netflix special, what would it be? Would it be law enforcement related or would it be something completely different? No, it would be law enforcement related. It would be tactical medicine. Tactical medicine. Uh, absolutely. I would let them see exactly what everybody does and what we do from the tactical side of things all the way to the emergency medical side of things. Now, I know there's a big push on rescue task force, which is integration of fire departments. That's not what I do. I don't stand outside and wait for you to bring me the patient. I'm going in there on the stack. Usually I'm either the breacher or I'm either posterior. And then after I get done with that, then after I know everybody's safe, then I'll start triaging folks and then bringing them out to the ambulance. So I want people to see that side of things. So what I've done is, thank goodness, it just finished up. I actually... <laughs> I wrote a children's book uh, about what is a tactical medic because my kids didn't understand what I did for, a uh -huh. while, you know, so here I am geared up in, you know, my digital cam and all of a sudden they're like, well, what are you doing? Where are you going? And then you, they see me grab my medical bag and then they see me put on my duty belt and then they see me put on my, my vest. I'm like, Oh, okay. Dad's going to go out with the sheriff's department. So they don't, really know what all we do. What's the name of the book and where can people buy it? It is What is a Tactical Medic by Todd Spence. And it's actually getting ready to hit Amazon platform in the next week or so. All right, good. So by the time this episode is out, people will be able to buy it. Absolutely. All right, that's awesome. I'll definitely put a link in the show notes. Yeah, um, so the, the link and everything. You have a favorite quote that you've lived by? I like a couple. I'm going to go philosophical, and then I'm going to go religious. Uh, religious, I always like Ephesians 
six eleven, put it on the whole armor of God. Therefore, you can stand against the devil and his evil schemes. I like that. I like that on the law enforcement side of things. And then just always being ready, always being prepared. And then the quote that I love that has always stuck with me since a kid is back in the old days, you know, four or five year old on Saturday morning, sitting there watching, you know, G.I. Joe or whatever. And they always at the very end, knowing is half the battle, right? So being prepared and being safe are half the battle. I grew up on G.I. Joe and I used to love that show so much. I had so many, so many of the figures. Oh, I did too. And, And I think that's where if we could turn back time and we wanted to retire early, we should have kept those in the package and we'd all be retired right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, if you could go back in time, that's a perfect segue, and talk to your 18-year-old self, what's three pieces of advice that you would give young Todd? Keep on the track you're on and progress. Keep on progressing. You know, I, I feel that you can never learn enough. I don't feel that there is a barricade to stop anything. I feel that you, if you have the want and the drive, that you can continue learning and keep on moving on and on and on to do whatever you need to do to better yourself. Could I see an 18-year-old Todd going into medical school after a few years? Possibly. But at that time, you know, I really didn't know what I wanted. Uh Uh, But I still love the path I chose. I love the way it chose me. I still love the adrenaline. I still love the job every single day. In your own words, what's the definition of a hero? How do you define a hero? I'm going to pull a quote from uh, Major Dick Winters, which was the the guy off of the Band of Brothers. He says, you know what? My grandkids asked me if I'm a hero. And he said, he says later on in his life, he says, my grandkids asked me if I'm a hero. And he just looked at him and smiled and said, no, but I served in the company of a lot. So uh, I love that quote. But as far as a hero... I don't know uh, what defines a hero, someone that is willing to do whatever it takes to help another, whether it's for safety, whether it is for medical, whatever it may be. If you're out there doing something to help someone to better them in their situation, in my mind, you're a hero. I love the definition from that movie. When you're feeling kind of stressed out, how do you save yourself? What's your routine? How do you show yourself love? My wife says British Baking Show because we're on this kick right now with Netflix <laughs> watching it. But um, I do a couple things every single day. And this is just me and I'm not down in anybody, but uh, I'm not a smoker. I'm not a drinker. I'm not a dipper. I, I don't do any of that stuff. But for me, just to reflect, I'll go and walk miles a day. You know, I may go walk three or four today, uh, two or three tomorrow, what have you just sitting there thinking and listening and listening to music or maybe, you know, listen to different podcasts and stuff like that. And then I hope you've listened to the hero Academy. I have. Absolutely. <laughs> I have. And then also I listen to you guys. I listen to Jocko Willink quite a bit. David Goggins is great, man. He's rough around the edges. That's something you just can't listen to around kids, but I definitely get his mentality and what he's saying. I get it. And I understand it completely, but yeah, you can't play that to school kids. I'll, I'll say that. <laughs> uh, and then that's really how I'm one. I love, you know, of course, love music. Can't play for nothing, but just like to listen to it, walk, reflect. And then if I've had a crazy, crazy stressful day, I'll either do go do iron therapy or I'll go do lead therapy. And luckily with our team, we practice it at least a couple times a month just shooting. And we'll get out there and just open it up. That's fun. So uh, I'm not a big gun guy, but I do enjoy going to the range. And I don't go very often. Yeah. Yeah, I just go. I'm one of those guys. I'm a good shot, but I just go when it's time to qualify. (laughs) We go whenever the armor guy says, hey, we got a shipment of this in. Let's go spend it before we lose that budget. (laughs) We'll go. And we'll bring out all the arsenal and we'll wear it all out and we'll clean it up and we'll do that, you know, a couple of times a year. Uh, Would you ever consider coaching young up and coming, you know, paramedics or EMTs or maybe law enforcement? Yes, absolutely. Because you have a lot of experience from a lot of different sides. Right. Yeah. I would like to do like a, a mentorship type deal. 
I do like going to events and speaking. I do like to do that. Uh, those doors have been opening up here as of late. I'm going to uh, San Antonio next week to do the APCO conference to speak about the wildfires because we're coming up on our five-year anniversary. And it doesn't seem like it's been five years because I can still remember every little detail of what all I did. And they wanted someone on not the analytical side of things, but they wanted the boots on the ground. And my first segue into that is like, look, I was boots on the ground. I wasn't in the command post. I still have the burns on my right hand to prove what I did. And I like those speaking engagements. I really do. As far as mentorship, yeah, I could see myself doing that as well. And we do a ride along program here. So we what we'll do is on career day on high school kids, we'll go and we'll go set up and say, okay, here's what we do. And it's not just a poster board. So what we'll do is we'll take a mannequin, we'll set it down and we'll say, all right, here's your ET tube. Here's your Lorenzo scope, innovate them. And they're like, what? Oh, it's easy. I've seen it on the movies. And then they're like, no, 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 not easy. Not easy. So that'll spark some intrigue. Because in the state of Tennessee, we have a promise program and we also have a lot of education incentives for you to go into a career and finish up and get your degree, even if it's a technical degree or an associate's degree. So there's a lot of pluses on side of that, that side of the fence. Yeah, 100 percent. Two final questions for you. OK, so when you got bit probably by a spider you didn't yep. get any superpowers <laughs> i did not i cannot scale buildings or shoot webs no but no. what would you say is your best ability is your strength what's your strength patience and understanding very good and if you had a comic superpower what would you have chosen and why if i had a superpower i would say power, unlimited strength to help any and all that I could. That would be my thing. Just because I've been in a couple of situations where I wished that I had superpowers. Uh, one case, an example is, and I'll never forget this, is probably my second or third year being a paramedic. We run a uh, MVA and it was, it was an MVA on a back road and it was a old Chrysler LeBaron convertible, which is an absolute piece of garbage car. And she motor, wrecked motor vehicle accident for people that don't know what MVA is. Yeah, motor vehicle accident. So what happened was she flipped on its top and with a convertible, you don't have any stability. You don't have A post, B post, C post. So it flattened on top of her. And whenever it flattened on top of her, she was on top of her child. Oh, my goodness. And we couldn't get there quick enough. We could not get there enough time. And I've tried my best. I end up with my bare hands. I end up pulling off the door to get in there enough to get her to drag her out. And as I drug her out, her and the child were, we were able to free them. Unfortunately, they had succumbed to their injuries prior to us being there. Yeah, those are kind of memories that you never forget. Do you have any funny stories from the fire department? Absolutely, absolutely. So what's the fun what's one of the funniest things that you can remember? Huh. Which age specific is your is your group? I should ask that. <laughs> <laughs> for the most part, we keep it PG for the most okay. part. Great, 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 great. I re I respond we have a lot of cabins in our area. And I responded to a call where they were having a uh mascot party and a little bow sheep answered the door and directed me to the purple kangaroo who was having chest pain <laughs> so so when you get there you have to be like is this real it, yeah. am i being pranked am i being pranked right now <laughs> no no i wish i was i looked around for the cameras and stuff like that but um it was legit. It was a uh, mascot adult party, and uh, <laughs> yes, we had we had lions, we had tigers, we had eagles, we had sheep, we had purple kangaroos, we had them all. So, in true fashion, I I went up there and I did not judge anyone. I said, "Sir, I'm I'm here to take care of you. If you don't mind, let's go ahead and slide this costume the rest of the way off, and uh, let me put the heart monitor on you." <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of those ones Todd, I just wanted to tell you I really appreciate everything that you 
have done in your entire career. I appreciate all of your service. And the whole reason why I started this podcast was to give people like you a voice and just to let people hear, you know, some of the things that you do out there. And if people want to follow you, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Uh, on Facebook, it's the medic Todd. I know it's pretty original. The medic Todd on uh, Facebook and Instagram. And uh, that's where I'm at right now. All right. I'll post up a link. I really appreciate you, brother. Thank you very, right. very much. And please stay safe. You as well. And uh, shoot me an email with your address. I'll get you some uh, some challenge coins and some of our sweet patches. Oh, to awesome. You, to get you going that way. How's that? That's awesome. Thank you very much. I'll All definitely right, send, I'll send you that address right now. All right, man. I appreciate you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Welcome to the Hero Academy podcast, the place where we can celebrate and highlight our frontline heroes. I believe that frontline heroes such as nurses, firemen, EMS, police officers, and military are heroes without capes. I don't care about politics, only positivity and purpose. I only care about those who have chosen to serve society. I believe in collaboration over competition. Here you will learn the secrets and strategies that let ordinary people become extraordinary inside of their passion. Sometimes we'll throw in some simple side hustles that everyday regular people are doing. Things you can do to make extra money, especially if you're starting to think about retirement and what's next. Inside this podcast each week, you will learn from people like you who are working full time, but still found time to create a course, grow a big team or a large audience or a profitable side hustle. The steps they took, their backstories and how they overcame burnout. The perfect blend of mindset and techniques. I'm your host, David Diem. Now let's get your dream lit for your freedom. All right, all right, family. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Everyone I interview, I've chosen for you guys because of their story. And I hope that you get some value every single time. If you did get value or just just simply enjoyed the episode, please share the episode with someone that you know. If you know of a guest, a frontline hero that has an amazing story, something uplifting or a positive message, hit me up in the contact form of www.davidleith.com or DM me at Instagram at davidleith1. Subscribe to the show because I have some really phenomenal guests coming up in the next few weeks that you definitely don't want to miss. All right, one.